afternoon YouTube sharpening up the chainsaw today um, the other day I went and did that cutout in that fallen tree I'll link that at the top for or at the top there for you if you hadn't seen it um, and part way through it things started getting a little dull uh, taking long and longer it was a uh, I think you said it was a hickory tree either way it was some hard wood and um, I've not sharpened this chain before. I've replaced it once, um, but I just never sharpened it. So um, I did hit some honey and some other junk in there with it. So I'm sure that probably wasn't great for keeping its edge. I know like hitting dirt and whatnot is not good for it. But what we've got here is it's a Husqvarna 450 Rancher. And uh, I went on ahead and I picked up the sharpening kit. Got this at the uh, blue box store where I bought the saw. Um, gonna go ahead and open this thing up and see if we can't figure this thing out. I've watched a couple videos and I've seen everything from people saying sharpen it with a drill, sharpen it with any old round file you can get and this and that and the other. Um, so I'm just gonna try to figure this out. It seems like this little uh, adapter or guide, whatever, I guess it's a guide. Um, seems like that's kind of a, a crucial thing to get your angles right from several of the videos I've seen. Uh, one thing I'll go ahead and point out, make sure you get the right one of these. There are several file sizes that you'll need to have or could possibly have depending on what saw and what chain you have and whatnot. So. Make sure you measure that or make sure you check and make sure you've got the uh, the right file size for your your chain. Right, let me get this opened up and we'll see what we've got. Okay, opening up the kit, we've got a few things here. I have two files. Um, they appear to be identical. I thought for a minute maybe one was rougher than the other but they appear to be identical so they they give me two round files a flat file uh, the flat file is for the uh, the rakers um, that's these little jobbers right there um, I know it has some kind of official name for it that's not rakers something like depth tooth or something I don't know but I've always heard it referred to as a raker. It's got a handy dandy handle that allegedly will fit both of these. Looks like it will. It's got two different spots there for it to go. And it's got the guide here. This is the guide that is going to make sure you get the angles correct on your teeth. And it's also got this little dude here. Oops. And this is for filing your rakers down. Um, it's got the hard and the soft, um, adjusting how much wood you take out at a time. You can take out more soft wood at a time than hard, so it, the adjustment's a little different. If you're going to be pr primarily cutting soft wood, you'll want to use this one. Hard wood, you're going to want to use this one. I'm going to be cutting hard wood. I'm going to cut some oak and whatnot here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and when I do this, I'm gonna go ahead and adjust mine for hardwood. I don't anticipate needing to adjust them just because um, everything I've read says you don't have to adjust those every time, every two or three sharpenings. But we're gonna check them anyway just to make sure. All right, you'll see it gives you um, kind of sort of instructions here. Uh, to be honest with you, it's kind of a matter of feeling it out and seeing how it fits. Obviously, it doesn't fit facing the right way in the wrong spot so you just kind of have to fit it should make kind of sort of sense because the file is going to want to go oh, on the wrong tooth. you want the file to go through there we go gotta find its sweet spot I guess but the file is actually going to run kind of through like that okay um, I was gonna try to sharpen this thing 
And I'm still going to try to sharpen it without putting it in a vise. I do have a vise next to me. But I want to sharpen it without the vise just because, let's just be real, if you need to sharpen it in the field and whatnot, you know, put a little sharpen on it. I want to know that it's not impossible to do. I don't anticipate it being a problem, but I may stick it in that vise here in a minute anyway just if it starts getting too annoying. So let's go ahead and get started. Oh, one more thing I want to point out. Your saw, of course mine's on the dirty side there. On the bar, it tells you the information you need to know as far as, you know, what five, see I've got the point, let's see if I can get there, 0.325 there, and it's 0.325 there. So that's how you're going to determine which one of these little kits you're going to need. And I went on ahead and I put it on the vise um, just to be able to facilitate kind of showing you. Um, that's kind of how it sits in there. And you'll see that file kind of sits down like that. And you want to just kind of two, three, four, five. Um, just push it through. You don't pull it back towards you. You're only going to do the teeth that are... Um, I guess to describe it, they, they're the ones that are kind of facing towards you. The open side of it is facing towards you. So then you're going to have to turn the saw around and do the other ones. So then you just kind of slide it over, find this little happy spot, and keep going. So I did mark this chain with like a bright green marker so that I knew when I'd gotten all the way to the beginning so I could turn the saw around. Um, you want to make sure you sharpen them the same amount on each chain uh, to keep it from kind of curving. I did have a saw once that did that and um, to be honest with you I thought my bar was bent or something. I mean it would cut like a like a concave angle. It was an old inexpensive saw that was many years ago and uh, I didn't know what was wrong with it. So if you see your saws cutting crooked or cutting curved it may just be your chain isn't sharpened up evenly. So um, you can do the same number of strokes or pushes on this. It's just one, two, three, four, five. And that's it. So let's finish this thing up. All right, and there's my green tooth. So time to turn it around. One thing I forgot to point out also, um, when this thing is pushing through here, you'll want to make sure that it's running and both of these little wheels are turning that just make sure you're you're level also you want to make sure your chain is sharp enough that it's going to snap back into place so you don't want your chain trying to roll over on you when you're trying to sharpen it up so let me get this turned around all right and we've gotten both sides now we're going to go ahead and check the uh the raker is there all right so basically with this tool from what it looks like you hook that tool under the tooth for hardwood and you want to see if I can't even get it to come through it's not it, they don't need adjusting it doesn't look like but if this raker oops, sorry were sticking up through that hole then you would take your flat file and come right across it um, I don't even feel it at all in there I'm gonna go ahead and check these to make sure but like I said I don't anticipate having to adjust these this first time all right, and that's that. I'm going to take it out and see how she cuts. Um, one thing I'm going to go ahead and point out, just a little tip. What I do, I have a bag of miscellaneous stuff. It's actually weed eater and um, chainsaw at the same time. Quite often I find myself taking both out. So um, I just keep all that stuff in there. That's that push lube oil for these bars you need on the end of it. Got a T wrench. Um, we've got another thing of 50 to 1 oil mix in there. Just you know, basic stuff you might need out there just to uh, take care of your equipment. Keep going if you need to. Also, a pair of gloves and that's it. Safety glasses, stuff like that, obviously. So I'm gonna take it out. There's a tree I've been wanting to drop. I'm gonna take it out and see if uh, how she cuts. All right, and there you have it. It definitely cuts a lot better. Um, just drop this oak. Let's see, that's going to be 
a good bit of firewood. I, am, I need to get caught up on some of that. So, um, But it's nice and sharp. I uh, started going ahead and cutting up some rounds and whatnot before I found out about a minute and a half ago that my mother-in-law is on her way over for dinner. So I need to go inside and fix some dinner. Um, but anyway, that's it. So make sure you sharpen your chains. Um, I'm, I've got a Harbor Freight electric char sharpener. I got it from my dad's place when he passed. I'll do a video on it. I'll try it out. I've never used it either. So see how I like it. But to be honest with you, it didn't take all that long to sharpen this thing by hand. I mean, what, 10 minutes or something like that. And that includes me, uh, stopping to film and you know, whatnot. So it's not a big deal. So keep it sharp. Um, remember anytime you're cutting trees, be safe. Um, be aware of the wind. This tree didn't fall exactly where I wanted it to, but I made sure I was safe in every direction that it could go. So it, uh, I'm usually pretty decent at hitting where I want to go. This one, the wind shifted on me up top and it didn't want to go exactly straight down on my hinge. So, but just be careful and keep it sharp, keep it safe. Um, click like, click subscribe. We appreciate it. Take care.